Tiff to estranged sisters with Boku and resolved issues meet for a European holiday in Swedish writer-director Lisa Langsiths in auspicious English-language feature Euphoria. The first production out of star Alicia Vikander's vicarious film Stable, this Osa serious, hysteriating drama, which is impossible to write about without spoilers, plays as if it might have come from Yorgos Lenimo's bin of discarded ideas. A prestige cast including Eva Green, Charlotte Brampling and Charles Dance will entice distributors to take a look but the post-screening takeaway is definitely not happiness or excitement but rather something that could be described by other e-words, such as excruciating and embarrassing. After planning a mysterious luxury jaunt, Emily Eva Green effuses happiness that her long-out-off Dutch younger sis Inez Vikander, a successful artist now suffering some negative reviews, has agreed to join her. Meanwhile, Ienis remains skeptical and standoffish, wondering how her drama queen sibling can afford such excess. But given that the surprise destination turns out to be a high-end euthanasia clinic in the remote countryside, accessible only by helicopter or hours of driving, terminally ill Emily needs only to afford six days before she literally and figuratively checks out. Ines, who is looking forward to massages and peaceful country walks, is not well pleased to be hearing about her sister's illness in this manner and is repelled by the clinic's concept, which includes personal companions who gravely look after the clients, every wish, a social media consultant able to plant information on the internet that will make them look like better people after death, and a solemn tolling of bells that presages the time for each guest to drink the draft of eternal sleep. Moreover, despite the best efforts of Emily's companion Marina Charlotte Brampling, as serene as an automaton, she's definitely not in the mood to rehash their childhood, particularly the sad period after their father left home and their mother turned into a dysfunctional, suicidal mess. When the siblings aren't quarreling or tentatively bonding if that is what you can call the awkward scenes in which Emily forces Inez to recount intimate details of her sex life and the banal things she plans to do after Emily's, er, departure, there's time to introduce a few other guests. These include Mr. Darren Charles Dance, a cynical brain tumor sufferer, whose loud, vulgar farewell party contravenes every aspect of the peace and quiet that the other guests are paying for, and Brian Mark Stanley, a paraplegic former pro soccer player whose death wish is extinguished by a night with Emily. After Langsith's debut feature, the realist drama Pure, which gave Vikander one of her first big screen roles, the two worked together again in Huddle, an oddball drama about an unconventional therapy group. There, Langseth explored some taboo subjects, but she did it in a playful manner that engendered real release. But even if audiences find themselves able to remain in their seats until the end of Euphoria Men, especially, fled the TIFF press and industry screening in droves, the catharsis feels fake and unearned. Moreover, the film lacks the warmth and respect for all of its characters displayed in Langseth's previous work. The visually undistinguished lensing by Rob Hardy, who shot the Vikander star Rex Machina doesn't help matters, nor does the stolid cutting by Dino Johnsader. In a film that could use some sly humor, the only thing that comes across as mildly amusing, apart from the use of David Bowie's rock and roll suicide, are the faux thigh, massage parlor-esque outfits worn by most of the clinic's staff. The unattractive leisure wear sported by Vikander and Green throughout is not an A. Good look. For the record, the film title comes from a Swedish poem by Gunnar Eklov recited during a would-be purgative evening on the clinic lawn.